Baby girl, Finelli. Daughter, Finelli. What's your name? Maria, for my mother. Maria Sofia. Maria Sofia Finelli. Hi, kid. You look like your mother. just got here. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's time for Ryan and friends to have a nap. For who? The babies sleep between now and their mid-morning feeding. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, uh, what'd you call her? Y you said Ryan. That's her name. Ryan Finelli. Unusual, isn't it? Ryan? I believe it's her mother's maiden name. If you'll excuse me, please. Ryan. Ryan. So lovely. Patty, this is the most wonderful way to wake up in the morning. You know, I couldn't bear taking a cold shower like you. If I got in a hot tub this morning, I'd probably go sound asleep and drown. Hey, hey, don't joke about that. No, this is, this is, this is really wonderful. I'm sorry you're so tired. I can't help it. I just feel wonderful. Great. Hey, don't you feel the tiniest bit wonderful? Let me put it this way. If I knew that I was going to go back to bed to sleep all morning, I would feel wonderful, yeah. <laughs> so there. You think I'm going to go back to bed? I'm not going to go back to bed. I have about a dozen things that I have to do for us. For you. Yeah? Like what? Well, it's mostly what you call wife business. But it's, it's really much harder than you think. You know, uh, once you start organizing everything. You know, I looked into the hall closet. And there are all these bags of, um, of laundry and shopping bags. I thought you sent the laundry out. No, no. It turns out, turns out that I sent these other shopping bags, and they had all my old clothes and little John's old clothes. See, Maeve has this charity organization, uh, St. Vincent de Paul Society. Well, anyway, they'll come back from the laundry, and they'll be uh, cleaned and ironed. Laundry's not going to be back until... Um... Friday. It won't be here tomorrow. I have to do something about shirts, Dee. Let's see. Shirts. Shirts. Hey, I got a great idea. Okay? Shirts. Okay. I'm gonna get you enough shirts to last you till Friday. How's that? Is that good? Okay, now today I decided that I'm gonna go out I'm gonna get some frozen little special things. You know, because I don't want you to come home and not have anything special for dinner. And then I'll go see Maeve and little John. And I'll come home early, nice early dinner, and I'll get to sleep very early so I can wake up and I can be absolutely beautiful for you. Patty? Hmm? When do you get off duty? Maybe not till tomorrow night. Oh. I may have to take over for Clem because he took an extra shift for me last night. Well, are you, are you going to be able to take a little nap tomorrow? I doubt it. Why? Well, I found this little Italian restaurant up on Broadway, and I just thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could just sit at a table and hold each other's hands and just look at each other across the table? You know the way you always look at me right over the glasses? No, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Uh-huh. 
And it'd be so nice just you looking at me and being with each other. It doesn't matter how many people are in that restaurant. I'll always feel like it's just... It's just you and me. And see, we'll feel very protected by the dim lights and special food and all those waiters, and it'll be just the two of us. You think I'm crazy? Huh? No. See, Patty, I know there are so many wonderful things that we can do together. Hey, listen. Oh, uh, what's the matter? Mm, I love that shaving lotion. Give me a kiss. Maybe you've changed your mind. You'd like to get in the bathtub with me. No, what I would like to do is say something to you, and uh, I want you to think about what I'm going to say. Something bad? No, it's uh, something serious, though. Oh, I'm sorry if I did anything wrong. Oh, I'm sorry about that laundry. I really No, am. it's not the laundry. Just listen, okay? Okay. Now, I'm worried because I'm afraid that you're depending on me for things that I can't give you yet. Like what? Well, time, mainly. Uh, attention. Doing things together, sharing things. Wait a minute. Patty, you're my husband, and I think well, that I'm your husband who has his final year of residency ahead of him at a hospital that's overcrowded and understaffed. Now, it's going to be a little over a year, maybe longer, before I can give you the kind of companionship that you want. I think we both better face that and try to deal with it now, or we're going to be in some trouble. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Wait, that's just it, honey. It's not a question of what I want. No, it is a question of what, of what you want. You said that you don't think I'll be able to face not having time with you. Now, you said that I won't be able to deal with it. I don't understand. What do you want? Look, I didn't say no time. What I'm saying is that I won't have enough time or the quality of time to give you what you want right now. And I won't until I'm, I'm through my, my year of residency. So I don't think it's wise of you to to spend the next year planning your life around my hours off. I think you need something for you. See, that's the reason why we're married. See, we'll have each other for us. Now, right? Honey, don't do that. You know what I'm trying to say. I think you ought to consider um, going back to school, maybe, or, or looking for a part-time job, or, or looking around for some volunteer work. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm gonna have little John take care. You did say that you wanted him to live here. And Frank said, you know, he might let us uh, let him stay over here. Yeah, honey, I do want that. But, but and right what now... about our own babies? And you promised that we'd have babies. Of course we will. Eventually. But you yourself said that you didn't want any children right away, Dee, and I think that's wise. Okay. Well, little John will be with us. See, Frank is seeing that I'm more responsible than I was before. So when little John is with us. How can I go to school? See, later on, when, when little John is in um, grade school, and then uh, his brother or sister is in kindergarten, then I can go to school, and I can have a job. I mean, I can't have one now. I really couldn't. Well, think again about school. And, and I don't mean full-time. I mean one or two courses, a few hours a week away from home. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do anything halfway. See, because then my, my heart really isn't into it. You're so sweet. You know what it is? I think you have a... You have a guilty conscience because you feel that you're not spending enough time with me. But I just want you to know, that's all right. It really is, because I know in a year or so it, it's going to be over. What I want to try to do now is just be the best wife that I possibly can be. So why don't you just relax and enjoy it? interested in your problems, Wally. I've got plenty of my own, and Mr. Frazier's got more than the two of us put together. Okay, right, you do that. Hey, what's up? I've been suspended. What? Say again? I got here a few minutes ago, and I went to my mailbox, and I found this. I've been suspended pending the investigation of the charges brought by Mrs. House. You can't do that to me. They've done it. The security officer must have filed his report last night and someone acted on it right away. What do I do now? We can't suspend you without departmental consent. I know Dr. Bolak hasn't been consulted because he isn't in yet. No one's mentioned this to me, so no consent, no suspension. It's easy for you to say, unfortunately, you do not accept the payroll. 
Felicia, I'm serious. This hasn't happened. You have it in your hand. It never happened. You didn't get it, you don't know anything about it. As soon as Seneca comes in, I'll talk to him and he'll make it official. I don't see how Dr. Bullock can make it just go away unless he convinces Mrs. House to drop the charges. And she believes that I'm a thief and she will not do so. I don't care what Mrs. House believes. I don't care what recommendations security has made. I know we're short of staff on this service. I had to fight to get you, woman, and I'm going to fight to keep you. You're a good friend. Well, friendship has nothing to do with this. I need a bilingual power professional and you are the only one I've got. The cynic will be in in a minute. If Miss Hess's house will not drop the charges, and if they continue the investigation, will Dr. Bolak have a choice? I mean, if it's in the rules that I must be suspended, can he really break those rules? Well, you don't know him very well, do you? He was kind to me when, when my money was stolen, but how am I to know the head of the department? Well, let's say that uh, he likes to have everything his way and no one's inclined to, to argue with him. Not that uh, he needs it, but the House Association will back him up. I don't understand. The House Association, the organization of hospital employees. They give the Christmas party. Yeah, they're supposed to represent the interests of employees in disputes with the hospital administration. That is a union. Well, it's a general idea, but it hasn't quite gotten that far. Alicia, how are you feeling? I'm very frightened, and I'm very angry. Well, I promise you that this is all going to work itself out. How can you promise that? Look, I've worked very many hours, very hard, to become a paraprofessional. And I came to your service from work that I liked, from a place where I was known and trusted because I wanted to help. And it is unfair that I should be in this kind of trouble. I have never in my life taken anything that was not mine. Jobs are hard enough to find when you are honest. But what kind of a chance do I have if I'm called a thief? You're not a thief. I cannot prove it, not even to you. Mm. Oh, Miss Nieves, Dr. Moultrie. Dr. Carter. Amazing what 36 hours sleep can do for so a person. You're telling me that you slept through a day and a half, are you? No, I think I got up uh, three times to eat, I see. Uh, if you will excuse me, please. I'll call you as soon as Seneca comes in. Thank you. Okay. What's something wrong? Well, you might say that. Had another theft on the floor. I know, I was there when somebody lifted a finger. No, no, no. After that, Mrs. House. You mean Dimples House, that lovely lady? Yes, Mrs. House decided to keep $100 in a bedroom table because she didn't trust the safe downstairs. Oh. When she discovered that it was missing, she accused Alicia of stealing it. Well, Alicia? Me, Avis. House demanded a search. Alicia volunteered her purse. And uh, House yelled and screamed. And Alicia, unfortunately, had five $20 bills inside. House screamed for security. Security... Uh, Unfortunately, Alicia had uh, opportunity, she had a motive, and she had a bag full of evidence. They sent her a suspension notice this morning. Oh, good grief, Clem. Yeah. I think I really messed things up this time. Bucky? Suppose you're here visiting Mary and your darling daughter, huh? I made an appointment with Dr. Uh, Marley early. So that I wouldn't run into anyone who'd ask me that very question. Oh, dear, you're fresh out of luck. Yep. Well, what did he say? Who? A Dr. Marley. Well, he's as impressed as ever with his own handiwork. I'm Good. fine. Good. Jack, you're not going to leave this building without going to visit Mary and your adorable daughter. That's about it. Oh, now, you could be doing me a great favor, you know, if you take this tour. Because I've got a dozen things to do across the street. Isn't it pretty? It's kind of a private joke between daughter and mother. Years ago, the children, they gave me this great, lovely petunia plant for Mother's Day. And at the time, I remember Mary and Pat were in some sort of a row, and Mary, in a fit of temper, picked it up and just threw it straight at his head and fortunately missed him. But, of course, there was dirt and petunia all over the, the kitchen floor for days. And the rest of the children, the three of them, were so angry with her. And they made her pay for another one, replace it with her allowance, which took her the entire summer. Of course, that gave Patrick great delight. How can you resist my little bits of family history? Come on, Jack, now take it to her and see your babe. I think both Mary and Ryan will be better off if I don't. Oh, well, where did you hear her name? Place is a big grapevine, wasn't hard to come by. Well, do you know it all? It's Ryan. Maeve Finelli. What do you think? Hmm? Maeve 
is fine. You don't, um, much care for the Ryan part, eh? It's all point, isn't it? Tell Mary that, uh, this is one time I didn't let her down. She got just the reaction that she was shooting for. Oh, no, Jack, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was not the whole point. No, come off it, babe. Mary was just trying to raise her spirits and give her daughter a sense of who she is. Mm -hmm. Same time giving me the equivalent of a fine old folk gesture. Uh, well, maybe. I'm saying just maybe. You had it coming to you. Now, if you don't like your daughter's name, why don't you go and tell Mary? Not in your life. You know, it's not too late to change it. Yeah, well, it's too late for a lot of things between Mary and me, including a round of what are we going to name the baby. I don't care what she calls the kid. I just find it interesting that she picked that particular way to get in a shot at me, that's all. Oh, for a man who doesn't seem to care. Uh, he's in a terrible temper. Some breakfast, and I just left Mary sitting up in bed planning her daughter's college education. Uh, gotta try and go down and see her sometime this morning. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, you're looking mighty exhausted. Oh, he should have seen me before I got eight hours of sleep. Eight hours, eh? Well, maybe not quite eight, more like six. After how long on duty, huh? Oh, Ma, who knows? One day and night just blends right into the next. I don't even know what month it is. June, just barely. Okay, I'll try and remember. <laughs> Did you see your father? Uh, yeah, Mr. Deboki's truck stalled. He went to jump the batteries. Oh. Did you stay around to tell me that, or get something else on your mind? Uh, something else. Oh? Uh, I need some help. Well, tell me. I'll do what I can. It's Delia. Oh. Yeah, it's nothing new. Uh, nothing that we didn't anticipate, but, uh, it just doesn't seem to be uh, enough time to get everything done that needs to be done. What would that be? Well, I think it's time now for Dee to start finding out who she is, what she wants, beyond me, outside of us. I could help her do that. I could try encouraging her to let go a little bit. If I could work on it a little bit every day, but I just don't have the time. Most of my off-duty hours are, are spent in psychological maintenance. You know, reassuring her that, that I love her, that I mean it when I say I'm not going to leave, that, that we'll make the marriage work. Well, have you shown any progress? Well, sure, some, but she's focusing everything on me. She won't make any plans. She doesn't want to be interested in anything that I don't share. And it's going to be a long time before I'm free enough to do that. Oh, indeed it is. I mean, next year, I'll be spending two-thirds of my life over at the hospital. Yes, and the other third should be spent sleeping. Well, I'm willing to compromise half of the one-third to sleep, the other half to D. <laughs> but right now, she's spending two-thirds of her life waiting for me to come home to entertain her. Ah, yes, which is the reason you only had six hours sleep last night. More or less. Well, are you asking me to uh, spend more time with her? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I just need your advice on something. Anything that outside the apartment to get her interested in. Well, darling, there's an answer ready-made. Little John. All right. Well, I know that she wants him to come live with us as soon as Frank allows it and she can get court consent. But until then... Oh, Pat, I hope you don't think I've been trying to stand in between Didier and her son. No, I know you haven't. I, I didn't mean to suggest that you had. I've just been... Waiting, as it were, for the honeymoon to be over. I mean, I think it's as important for little John as it is for Dee for the two of them to spend time together. I mean, misses it terribly. Well, I think it may be time now. You think um, Frank would mind if you brought little John over to the apartment for a little while this afternoon? Oh, dear. I mean, she's the child's mother, for heaven's sake. She isn't, um, well, you know what I mean. I mean, she's not upset about anything, is oh, she? No tears, no temper tantrums, no formless fears. Well, I'll think about it then. I mean, I can't imagine in the world why she couldn't take him to the park. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mom. See ya.
Sonny may rule Port Charles, but his power can't stop a bullet aimed at his son. Revenge will always be a priority. Watch what or who blows up on today's new episode of General Hospital. Tonight at 10 on SoapNet.